All right, so it's time to do the roughly one year update on this thing. I actually thought about this about a week ago and then I forgot about it again. So we're doing this now. It's currently July 6th of 2017. And I built this thing way back on June 20th of 2016. So we're a couple weeks over a year this thing has been blinking. Now originally when I did the build video, which I'll put in like one of those little card things if I remember, uh, to that video, which uh, it's quite an old video. It's amazing how much has changed uh, just in the last year with the quality of this video production. I've got this new microphone, new lighting system. The video just looks way better and sounds way better now than it did back then. But anyway, I've got a bit of a build video for this thing. Uh, but anyhow, it's just a blinking jewel thief circuit, which is soldered straight across a Duracell AA battery. And really, in hindsight, I probably should have used a triple eight. Wouldn't have ran for quite as long, but uh, but anyhow, uh, when this thing was first put together, the battery voltage was about 1.6 volts, as I recall. And then six months ago, I did a update on December 21st of 2016. Um, uh, the voltage then was about one and a half or so, 1.53 or something, somewhere around those lines. So we're gonna see what it is now, which is a year later, still blinking. And when I made the original video, I kind of did a rough guesstimation as to how long this was supposed to last using a current shunt resistor and measuring the uh, current with the scope. I said it would last about 125 days. Obviously we have surpassed that. We're at like 100 and, or sorry, not 100 and something, like 380 days or so. Uh, so I've even busted out the uh, old cheap multimeter that I've used to test this before in the past. We, yeah, I haven't actually tested this yet, so we're doing this live on camera. We are at, if I can get a connection here and get the meter somewhere where you can actually read it without me blocking it. Kind of a tricky thing to do. Not a whole lot of working space here. Camera's down pretty well. That is definitely not the battery voltage. Come on. 1.501 volts. So yeah, it's not uh, dropping anywhere anytime fast, is it? So uh, 1.501 volts. That battery is still mostly full, considering this is going to run all the way down to 0.08 or so, maybe a little lower than that. Uh, the other thing, in the original build video, I actually showed that I had uh, one of these already built up and running for a while, and that is this one. As you can see, it's still blinking as well. This one blinks a lot faster. Uh, it's got a little red LED in it. And this one, originally, this battery was half dead to start with, and it's one of these real cheap uh, dollar store alkaline batteries, which I'm surprised hasn't leaked all over the place yet, really, but... Uh, it hasn't. I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't do too much. Well, I didn't seem to have done any damage when I soldered this battery. Um, yeah, it's not leaking, so I guess it's okay. It's not a normal practice to solder on batteries. I just wanted to. Uh, the problem with using the holder like this is that it, uh, the connection in it actually isn't really all that great, and it will come loose, and it does weird things uh, when it does that. But. Uh, it's never stopped blinking. The thing is, when the connection gets weird, it starts to blink faster or slower. Maybe you can see it if I wiggle the battery. It won't come completely loose, but it will kind of do some weird things. Anyhow, let's shove the probes into this one. Now, this one's been going since, I think, about March of 2014. So this has been going for over three years, well, about three years and four months. This one... And like I said, the battery wasn't full to start with. This one is at 1.219 volts. So yeah, still plenty of battery left in there. So anyhow, those are both still working just fine. So, so anyway, these are still working just fine. You'll see I got magnets on the back of them. These things just stick onto my refrigerator. They have been knocked off a couple times, but they've never uh, stopped working. They haven't been broken yet, anyway. 
So I pretty much expect this thing to last at least another four years. That's my guesstimate. Because we will start having issues with the self-discharge on the batteries as well. Though, what's this rated for? 2023 is when the battery expires or what it's uh, like guaranteed to be good by. The, uh, the modern alkalines are usually pretty good with the low self-discharge characteristics. What I should do for this is actually go ahead and drop a schematic for it. Uh, I'm not real sure. That looks like it's a 100 microfarad cap and a that's 100k resistor. So I should go ahead and draw up a schematic because I don't think I have one for this. So uh, I'll do that real quick and I'll show you what the uh, circuit is and you'll be able to build off of that quite easily. All right, so this is the finished schematic or at least as I remember the schematic. Uh, so we got a one and a half volt battery here that uh, the positive of that's going straight into your standard Jewel Thief transformer. This one or both of these, I think they have, I don't know about 10 turns or so, let's see. All right, so there's actually about 20 turns on that little uh, toroid that I just salvaged off of something. Uh, but anyhow, that's about 20 turns worth of wire. That's not really that critical anyway, but it's a standard jewel thief winding where the, uh, the one coils backward compared to the other one, hence the two dots there. Then coming down here, one of the coils that gets connected into the collector of an NPN transistor, in this case it's a 2 and 2222. That also gets hooked up to the cathode of an LED. The anode of the LED is hooked up to the emitter of that transistor, and the emitter of the transistor goes back into the negative of the battery. And then off the other coil that goes through a 100k resistor and that 100k resistor has a 100 microfarad capacitor across it or in parallel with it and then that's going into the base of the transistor so fairly simple circuit it is just a standard jewel thief except for you wouldn't have the capacitor in a standard jewel thief and this would be a 1k resistor ish instead of 100k so it's these two components that are setting up the blink rate if you want it to blink slower you can use a larger value capacitor or resistor or uh, if you want it to blink faster you can use a smaller capacitor or a smaller or lower value uh, resistor though usually when i change the blink rates of these things i try to change the capacitor instead of the resistor because uh, this one, I think it's, that's definitely got a 100k resistor and I can see that. And this capacitor is rated for 85 degrees C. I think it's like 4.7 microfarad or something like that. It's not very high. That oh, was 22 microfarad. 22 microfarad cap on this one and you can see how fast that blinks and it's the same resistor value versus 100 microfarad. And I think the transformers on these are pretty similar. Anyway, it might not be perfectly the same number of turns, but they're pretty similar transformers. So anyway, this has been going for over a year now. It's still at about 1.5 volts. And, well, this thing should continue to go for, I'm going to guess, at least another four years, which give it a total life of five years, which I think is pretty impressive, considering this that little LED blink is actually quite bright. You can always see it on the wall at night. And... Uh, if you stare straight into it and you're you know just blinded for a half a second but uh, anyhow that is the uh, blinking jewel thief schematic in case anyone was curious about this i'll link in the build video actually they have already done that but i'll have to link in that six month update as well uh, in a card hopefully i can remember to actually do that and maybe i've already put it in by now but uh, anyway uh, that's about it for now guys bye